Those blue chippers are indeed lining up behind. Two shots back. We'll go to Jordan Spieth, 68-69. Things were rolling right along for Jordan. His uh, second nine included birdies on 11, 12, 16, 17 before hitting one mark. 199 yards off the tee of 18 gets a, a, a very generous uh, break hitting it into the, the boundary fence over there. He'd end up making bogey, but could have been much worse. Yeah, he hit the shrimp off the tee there on 18. <laughs> the fast turner and a little fortunate. I mean, that was a big sales job he did on uh, John Munch over there to convince him that he could hit that thing left-handed and eventually get relief. But look. That's why he's a pro. He knows the rules. He knows how he can work them in his favor. And in the end, it was nearly a miraculous Spithian sort of a par four. But I have to say this, because last night I did comment about Jordan because we had him in some featured groups coverage. And of all the times I've seen Jordan play, he looked as comfortable with a golf swing as what I've seen him. You know, that kind of crazy practice rehearsal swing that he was making where it was in and then up and around and over and and sort of awkward looking to get feels in the golf swing, that's gone away. And the measure of Jordan for me, and now I'm overlooking the tee shot down 18 because he was trying to craft something low into the wind. He's actually driven the ball fantastically well. I mean, for us, for me, there was a tee shot that he hit down number nine today, which was playing straight back into the wind. They'd moved the tee, the tee forward, so the landing area was pinched by a bunker. There's out of bounds left and thick rough down the right. And he set this draw, off, this draw off there right center and just smashed it down there and had like seven iron into the green. And this is a hole that just a few groups before, Tyrrell Hatton had fairway medal in there. Rory was going in with four iron and stuff. So it speaks to the fact that he is clearly confident with a golf swing. And he's, he's, he's looking sound to me. I, I would not be surprised at all if he's contending Sunday afternoon. And, and, and just for what it's worth. Because all the stats people are going to tell me he's putting poorly. He was chipping and putting and that sort of stuff really well and making sort of the putts that you had to. Now, remember that strokes gain putting number, right? Mm -hmm. If eight feet is kind of the break-even number, so if you make an eight-footer, you zero strokes, right? If you make inside there, you're not gaining strokes. If you make from outside that number, then you're gaining stroke. But if you miss inside that, then you're losing strokes. And I didn't see him miss but one putt that was on the 10th, that was like seven feet downhill, sort of awkward, and he never looked comfortable with a read. As far as I'm concerned, he's putting well. Now, it remains to be seen what happens on the weekend because, yeah, so what I was saying, I, I mean, I, I feel like Jordan is in position. I, I really do. He, he knows how to win. The golf course is, is rewarding, you know, savvy play. And, and when conditions get hard, then scrambling becomes a thing. And let me tell you something. That guy... There was one call yesterday where he hit it in the back bunker, and I said to my announced colleague, John Swantek, I'm like, this is the kind of shot that Jordan, everyone else is going to be caught with their pants down, and Jordan Spieth is going to thrive. And he hit this bunker shot, came out perfectly, landed on the green, and I was like, you're kidding. And it went in the hole, and we both just laughed. We laughed out loud because that's what he's doing. So his powers of recovery are off the charts, and when conditions get hard, these greens get firm, they're going to have to do that. And Jordan has no peer around the greens. He just doesn't. And I don't care what you throw at me. I will fight. I will I will die on this hill with his skill around the greens. The continued chase pack, six under Xander Shoffley, Corey Connors, five under Davis, Riley, Patrick Cantlay, Matt Fitzpatrick, Justin Thomas. We cannot talk through all of them. Let's go to JT here, Mark. It was a 67 that included both bogeys on 17 and 18. He was rolling. There was a little bit of frustration, obviously, with two bogeys coming in, but to still post a 67, one of the rounds of the day in those conditions, um, he certainly kept himself and asserted himself into the mix. Yeah, he's quality. In round one, we had him and we saw all the round and he birdied the first hole and you were kind of like, oh, here we go, you know, because it was perfectly put together, driving the fairway, wedge up there, 15 feet buried in the heart. And for the rest of the time, he was battling the golf swing. Some just looked very uncomfortable. And in the end, put together a pretty scrappy 72. But that's what winners do. You know, on their bad day, they keep themselves in the mix. And around Bay Hill, par is golden at times. And 72 yesterday did not put you out of the equation. So he kept himself in the tournament. 
and then off to that fast start today. And I've got to tell you, that shot into one. We were watching guys bounce the ball through the back of the green from the fairway there ad nauseum because it was so firm. For him to sting a wedge in there and spin it into position where it stayed in that peninsula, then he made, and then he birdies the second, which you should get a free game for because that par three is so hard. It, 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 was, it, it was super special. And he started to look like he got comfortable. And for all of these guys, I think the comfortability is the aspect. Because if you can be comfortable in an uncomfortable situation, you are pretty much beating a half of the competition. And today was awfully uncomfortable with crosswinds and thick rough and, and unpredictable uh, gusting. You know, it wasn't just the wind velocity. It was so in and out. And to look as comfortable as what he did, I was like, man, this is good. So despite the bogeys, he'll be a little PO'd about that. But man, he's right in the thick of things and looking pretty sharp. Speaking of uncomfortable, let's talk about a couple of guys who went in the wrong direction. Cam Young, who got to eight under par after he birdied the 12th hole on Friday. That's one off of Kurt Kitayama's current pace. Unfortunately, Mark struggled on his way in. A bogey on 15, a bogey on 17, and just moments ago made a double on 18 to play his final four at four over, and he currently sits five off the pace. Yeah, he's not the first guy to do that. I'm sure we'll deal with Ram because he played his last five and four over as well, although that was the other side of the golf course. So it happens. Um but what's he? He's in with 73, so that puts him at four under or something like that, right? Four under, yeah. Um, yeah, the lead is eight or nine. Uh, forgive me, my, my nine. memory. Nine. So he's only four, five back. I mean, five back on this golf course, you do that in 30 minutes. You know, if one guy goes in the wrong direction and you have the old Mongolian reversal kind of thing. Um, so I, I'm not concerned. He'd like to iron out that finish a little bit. But the truth is, he didn't hit that bad a tee shot into 17, just run through the back some, and and he missed a like a five or six footer for par, and so that sort of stuff happens. So um, the, it was the first I'd seen of Cameron Young, who didn't look that sharp in the early portion of the season, but yesterday he looked good when I was watching him play, and and today there were flashes of brilliance. It just was a hard day, and and I think sometimes the fact that a JT goes around in 67 this afternoon and you see guys like Corey Connors doing good days, you think that it's on. But the thing about this weather is you just got to get on the wrong side of a lie once and it can catch up with you. And he fanned that tee shot down the 18th and to miss right on 18 is the cardinal error. Um, from there, you've got no chance. And then if you try and get a bit audacious and you go out to that green, then you compound errors. So it happens fast. And he'll probably learn from that because he's so good. So um, Cameron Young is, is fine. I think he'll be okay. You've already alluded to it. John Rahm going in the wrong direction was the favorite and leader after the opening round. It was a four over 76 on this Friday, which also included struggles over his last five holes. Uh, he did, as you mentioned, Mark, finish on the front side. So it's bogey on five, double on six, birdie on seven, bogey on eight, bogey on nine. John Rahm losing two and a half strokes to the field is his worst round since the third round of last year's tour championship. And I'll probably get scared for this, but of all the guys who went bad today, this one was the most concerning to me because it really looked like the, he's got a situation going on with a driver where he just tends this left miss. And we talked in the preview show about how missing left around Bay Hill is just a bad idea. And whereas he was completely virtuoso and looked flawless in round one, today that left miss caught up with him a little bit. And then that stuff tends to have a knock-on effect kind of deal. So the next thing, you miss left, then you miss a green, then you, you don't get it up and down, and then you have a paper cut and a paper cut, and all of a sudden, then down eight, down six, which was his 15th or 14th hole at par five, the boomerang one, he pulls the tee shot out of the neck. He knew it was wet when he hit it. And uh, that, that was sort of the, the straw that kind of broke the camel's back. He did bounce back with a birdie two thereafter, but after there you could sort of see almost, not that he had capitulated, but you could see there was a situation where the normally fiery Ram had kind of like a punch drunk look about him, I'd say. And and it was it was odd to see because ordinarily you throw Ram an uppercut and he's going to get up and just 
bash the heck out of you. And, and today I didn't see that. I was surprised at the finish. So it's a bit odd. Um, I'm sure he'll probably bounce back tomorrow. But that finish was completely out of character. And, and it makes me wonder what was going on inside of his head. I wish I knew. But it was strange. That would be fun. They should sell a subscription service to what John Rahm is thinking right now. Can you imagine? Good I don't grief. think I don't think we could. It could never make it to broadcast, and we could never play it here on the on this family show. Well, I'll double you down on that one, right? Because <laughs> we had him on our show this morning when he was on the ranch. Imagine inside John Rahm and Tyrrell Hatton's head. Oh. That's going to be a roller coaster of biblical proportions, you know.